about your theory about the rings of Saturn and how this all came about. Okay, uh, really it's not a theory. When you get down to it, um, you see some pictures and you finally come up with a conclusion as a matter of fact. Uh, how I got started was that um, uh, in 1980, you know, Voyager 1 uh, uh, had a close encounter uh, with Saturn. And then in August of 1981, uh, Voyager 2 had a similar encounter. And that was only nine months apart. And I'd made copious notes on each one. And when I compared them, why um, there are great changes. Uh, a couple of examples are that um, in the Cassini division, I guess we should explain here that there are four major rings in the ring system, A, B, C, and D. And between the A and B ring, there is a division called the Cassini division. Uh, that was supposed to be pure space. And uh, on Voyager 1, it looked like that, but on Voyager 2, it was filled with matter. And that came as sort of a surprise, mm -hmm. and it wasn't in the script. Um, then there was, uh, uh, well, the rings on Voyager 2 looked different. Uh, on Voyager 1, they were very smooth. On Voyager 2, you may recall, they had a sort of a phonographic uh, record kind of look to them. Right. And um, so all this happened in nine months, but it really wasn't supposed to because... Uh, these rings were supposed to be primordial matter and static, and the matter had collected there over eons. And okay, so it, it turned out it was dynamic, and that really caught my attention. And so I started to, to uh, collect images that were in the public domain. And um, one of the images really fascinated me, uh, in as much as it was very dark, it had a dark background. Uh, and um, I could trace the outer edge of the A ring on the left side. I could trace it all around, but on the uh, right side, uh, I, I just couldn't find it. And I think that picture you uh, have provided to us, it's on our website now that uh, people can take a look at. Go ahead, Norman. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll be going to the website so you can get a better look at this. Um, and... So that uh, I put this image under a microscope and, and broke through the dark area uh, with a flood lamp and then photographed this, and lo and behold, the ring was literally cut off. Uh, if one drew a straight line across the Cassini division, uh, all the area of the ring that would normally be outboard of that line was was not there and so you take a look at the ring it, all this came as quite a surprise i wasn't expecting that and um so the ring was not complete circularly so so what do you mean it it, it wasn't there uh it was missing well i know, i know but what does that mean uh well let's go a little farther and i think you'll see all right a little bit what it means um, now, I couldn't make out just what was going on at this point. And then I realized uh, that I could use the Cassini division as a measuring stick, and I found out that the amount of the ring, the width of the ring that I could see, uh, it should have been about four times the width of the Cassini division, and I was only getting around two. So the ring was also not complete radially. Then, recognizing that, um, I noticed at the foot of the ring there was a cylindrical object. And from this object there were emissions, and it was these emissions that um, were making the ring. All, all the emissions you saw uh, were constrained to the length of this object, and that meant that that's how the rings were made. So I think that answers your question. Of, of what what it meant, but are you saying that these rings were manufactured um, not naturally? Uh, it, there are these objects that are so high powered; they have emissions that come out of them. Uh, it, you might say it's analogous to 
uh, a contrail of a jet engine on an airplane. Okay. And but what we got here is a long object, and so he just lays a broad swath uh, as uh, as a contrail, which you see as, as the ring. There have been several people, Norman, who have talked about the possibility. Uh, of some kind of massive size craft around Saturn. And sometimes you listen to it tongue-in-cheek. Other times you sit back and go, hmm, that's not a bad little story. And y you seem to be at least implying that there might be something out there. Well, yeah, not only am I implying it, but uh, now if one would click on my name and go to uh, the Ring Makers of Saturn website, uh, the first thing that will pop up there is the front jacket cover of the book Ringmakers of Saturn. There's this big right dot there, yeah. this red dot. Okay, now that is part of an emission, and you can barely see the object. In this case, it's pretty cool the way the uh, pictures is presented there. The bright, uh, the brown area on the right is, is the B ring. Now the big orange spot is larger than our moon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, now, now that's part of an emission, and that means there's just a whale of a lot of energy associated with these vehicles, and so that they can get around. How, how many vehicles do you think are out there, Norman? Well, um, there's certainly more than two. Um, I've found the number of them embedded in the rings, and um, now if you click on um, the back cover. Click on the back cover. How do I find that? Where is that? It's in the nav bar. Jacket back cover. There it is, right there on the left-hand side. Okay. Okay. So there you see a swath. It's sort of uh, yellow and whitish. It has a little green edge on each side. On the right, that's the, cas that's the Cassini division. Uh, and you see um, that at the bottom here, there is... A cylindrical object. Now, now all of all of what you see in terms of these emissions coming from the object, that really represents forces. Okay. Now, on each end, you'll see a coloration, and that represents a longitudinal force. So, you've got longitudinal forces going on, and you've got uh, vertical forces. And even below the one end here, you see a luminous source. So there's another source there uh, of, of, of forces. Now, this all means that here you have something that has a complicated set of forces, but yet it's located in the ring in just a partic particular place. And that takes some intelligence to do that. What do you think the propulsion?